So the most viewed video on my channel is the most useless degrees with over 1.7 million views. Bruh. And this is by far my most controversial video. It seems like after watching this, a bunch of people had an existential crisis. But for the most part, in the comments section, people had a healthy discussion and talked about which degrees were scams and which ones were worth it. But I wanted to give you the other side of the coin here, okay? Because I'm not just a negative person, all right? We're keeping positive vibes on this channel. And today we're gonna talk about the most useful degrees. There's some majors out there where you can make it work for you, but it's a little bit risky. You know, you gotta make sure you got an internship, do your due diligence, do your research, think ahead, but you can maybe make it work. And then there's other degrees that are pretty much an automatic golden ticket to a good job. And those are the ones that I'm gonna be going over in this video. And without further ado, we're gonna jump into it. So sit back, relax, gently tap that like button, and let's get started. Number five on the list is going to be math-related degrees. Now, math is basically the language of the universe, so it's pretty obvious why this one is so useful. So for instance, you've got actuarial mathematics, where mid-career you're gonna be making over 130,000 a year. Then you've got the combination of an economics and mathematics degree, also known as econometrics, where you're gonna make at least 121,000. And you'll see that almost every profession is moving towards being more math-heavy. One great profession you can get into if you get a statistics degree, for instance, is data scientist. And data scientists can easily make six figures a year plus, and I think it's one of the best professions, especially in the next 10, 20, 30 years. Talked about this before on my channel, but data is now worth more than oil. It's just incredibly valuable for you to have data on the internet. Now, the only issue that I have with math degrees is sometimes getting a pure math degree. A pure math major can be a little bit too abstract. And that means that yes, the skills you're learning are valuable it's just a little bit difficult for you to apply that in a practical way in the real world so for that reason sometimes you'll have a little bit of difficulty getting your first job now if you got an internship during school you probably won't have much difficulty at all but if you just go into the degree thinking you don't have to do anything and people are going to be lining up at your door offering you a job with this one it's kind of does fall into that category of the catch-22 you need two years of work experience to get a job but you need to get a job in order to get two years of work experience. But once you do get those two years of experience, you are going to be good to go. Number four on the list is going to be business degrees. Now, I've talked about this before. With business degrees, you do have to be kind of careful because some of them are a little bit more worthless than others. Okay, so if you get like a general business major or a business administration degree, these are relatively useless just because of the fact that they're so general. You're not really learning a specific skill. So in business, the trick is to specialize in something, all right? Business as a skill is already general enough as it is and so you want to specialize in maybe supply chain management or management information systems management information systems for instance is one of my favorite ones in mid-career you'd be making around hundred and seven thousand dollars a year MIS management information systems is basically like the combination of business skills with technology skills and I think it's going to be a great one now and also in the next 10 to 20 years next on the list we're going to be talking about engineering now the thing about mathematics degrees and engineering degrees degrees is they are relatively difficult okay for the average person they are going to be much more difficult than some of the other ones on this list like business for instance I know everybody has their own specific skill set and all that sort of thing I get that you know one of the hardest classes for me for instance in college was an English class okay I took a really advanced English class and I ended up not doing so well in it but overall for the average person engineering is going to be more difficult people have a hard time even finishing it in four years. A lot of engineers end up you know, doing five, six years even just to get their bachelor's degree. Now, if you're anything like Kevin O'Leary, he actually believes that engineering is the only major that's worth going to college for. I disagree with that. One engineering, number two engineering, and number three, Go with engineering. I remember watching his YouTube channel. I could be wrong on this because I couldn't find the clip, but I believe he told his son that basically he would only pay for his college education if he became an engineering major. Now, I do see where Kevin is coming from here. He does make a lot of good points in his videos. You know, when it comes to engineering, basically what you're learning is practical problem solving. And especially if you're somebody who might want to become an entrepreneur in the future, 
That's basically what entrepreneurship is. You are solving problems. You go out in the world, you find really painful problems that are just a huge pain in the butt to people, and you solve them and you package them as a service or a product. So as an engineer, you're almost like a middleman between kind of like the science side of things, like mathematics, science, and also technicians. So you do have some more practical skills that you can use in the real world, but you can also you know, understand the scientific side of things as well. Now, I think everybody knows that engineering degrees make a ridiculous amount of money. You can very easily get to six figures. They are the highest paying degrees on average. However, I think a lot of people on the internet basically just say like engineering is the, is the best type of degree, like period, right? And when it comes to usefulness, they are very useful, but you do have to understand the downsides as well. So we wanna talk about the pros and the cons. So the cons of an engineering degree is first of all, they are very, very difficult, okay? A lot of engineers take more than four years in order to finish their bachelor's degrees, right? A lot of the time they're going to be taking five, even six years sometimes. And these are smart people. These aren't like dumb people that have to take a long time. Many of them end up dropping out and never finishing at all. It's heavily science and math based. And so if you're somebody who's not very good at math or science, then maybe you should consider not going into engineering. And then it's always changing. So technology is always changing. Everything that's happening in the world is changing. And so their engineering curriculum is going to change with it. I guess you could say that's a pro or a con. Now the pros of going into engineering is it's very difficult, right? So being very difficult in some ways is a good thing because it creates a barrier to entry. Not everybody can do engineering, so if you're somebody who can do it, that means that you have a huge advantage. Another pro is that it pays very well. Everybody knows this, engineering, especially as a bachelor's degree, is probably one of the best paying out there. And there's also a lot of room for career growth. Everything is constantly expanding and evolving. There are some types of engineering careers you can go into where a master's degree or a doctorate actually makes sense, whereas in many cases, getting a master's or a doctorate is just gonna put you deeper in debt. So yeah, just like all of the other ones, engineering degrees do have their pros and their cons, but for the right person, it can be a great choice. Number two on the list is going to be technology-related degrees. So this is kind of like a meme on this channel at this point, computer science, maybe the best possible degree that you can get extremely useful especially this particular time in history as a software developer mid-career you're going to be making around hundred and six thousand dollars a year and the easiest way to get into software development is getting a computer science degree we are entering into the age of automation and a lot of people say that you're either going to be the one doing the automating or your job is going to get automated and with a computer science degree of course you would learn how to code and be the one who is programming the software that would be automating a lot of these systems learning to code is the closest thing that you're ever gonna get to a superpower. There's just so much that you can do with it. I think this is the single most valuable skill that you can learn in the next 20 to 40 years, bar none. And you can easily make six figures whether you just wanna be an employee, which, you know, that's the ideal life for some people. They just wanna go to their job nine to five and then come home and have, you know, nothing else to worry about. Or if maybe later on you want to start your own business, or if you wanna be like a super employee and rise up the ranks and, you know, make 500,000, a, th a million dollars, a year at one of these big companies. All of those options are gonna be open for you if you go into computer science. Now, the reason that I didn't put this as number one on the list is because this video is about the most useful degrees. And technology degrees are extremely useful, don't get me wrong, but there's one degree that is more useful in my opinion than technology, and by that I mean it directly translate. Like you get the degree, and you end up getting a job doing the exact thing that you got the degree for. In many cases, people will get an engineering degree, for instance, at, like let's say mechanical engineering degree, and they don't end up becoming mechanical engineers. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing, but this is a list where I'm being very specific. There is one type of degree where you will almost always have demand. There's almost always going to be demand, even if it's the end of the world, Armageddon happens, these people will still have jobs on the last day that the world exists. And that is health-related degrees. One unfortunate fact about life is all of us are going to end up getting sick and dying someday, and that's just never gonna go away. 
unless maybe some of those genius engineers figure out a way to make us live forever. And here in the US at least, there is constantly a shortage of healthcare professionals. Nursing has had a shortage for like the last 20 years. It's totally ridiculous. Same with doctors. There's almost constantly a shortage here. And you know, working with the laws of supply and demand, this can be a good thing in many ways because you're gonna have a lot of options when you go into most healthcare related field. Great website to look at, one that I looked at when I was in high school is explorehealthcareers.com or actually I think it's explorehealthcareers.org. This is the career path that I went into and again, none, this isn't the best one, right? It's gonna depend on your own personal situation, what you're good at, what you're passionate about, etc. You know, I weighed all of those factors and I found that I wanted to go into healthcare and that's why I became a pharmacist. Now, some of the cons of a healthcare degree and a healthcare related uh, career is first of all, you are going to get worked really hard. Unfortunately, there's shortages a lot of the time and so therefore, you're gonna have to work a lot. And the time that you are working, you're probably gonna be running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Second thing is you tend to see people at their worst. So, you know, you might see consistently somebody who's having the worst day of their life. And so they're probably not going to be in a very good mood. And a lot of the time they are going to take it out on you. This is something where you just kind of have to have thick skin and you have to realize the context of the situation. These are not bad people. They're just having a bad day. And they're probably just really angry because our healthcare system here in the US is a complete mess as well. Another con here is you have this kind of dilemma of business versus health. A lot of people think that, you know, health really careers shouldn't be run like a business there are some kind of like moral dilemmas that happen there on top of that you have to deal with a lot of government regulations and then whatever company or hospital that you work for is going to have certain protocols so you're constantly thinking about like 10 different things in your head oh what's the state law what's the federal law what's the protocol at my hospital what is ethically the right thing to do here some of the pros of healthcare are at least here in the US you are pretty much always going to have a job people are always going to need someone to take care of them. No matter how bad the economy gets, people aren't just gonna like stop taking their medications. They're gonna continue taking those medications. They're gonna continue to need to be treated. Another thing is you get to make a real impact. Even if people get mad at you sometimes, uh, you know, health-related careers do tend to have a high meaning score, which I talk about quite a bit in my other videos. And the reason for this is because you really do know that you're making a difference. Another pro is you can live pretty much anywhere you want to because of the fact that, you know, there's nurses everywhere in the United States, right? Right? There's nurses everywhere, doctors, pharmacists, etc. Some professions you can even transfer to other countries. So for instance, nurse practitioners, I believe their license is still valid in quite a few countries around the world. And same goes with doctors. Now, if you haven't done it already, go ahead and gently tap that like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and comment down below any thoughts, comments, criticisms, etc. that you have on the video. And before you leave, check out my other videos right here. I made them just for you.